In a futuristic dystopia, people are known as members and their lives are controlled by the administration known as the collective. Most illnesses have been cured, and there's no violence or crime, but in the process they've also got ridden of emotions, and now it's forbidden to show any feelings or make any contact with other members. There's no love or marriage, and babies are born through artificial insemination whenever a particular woman is summoned to do her part for society. There are no colors or decorations either, everyone wears white and lacks a personality. Even their meals are dull, and the only hobbies they have are basic repetitive tasks like solving bland puzzles. They also have chips on their arms so computers can watch over their daily lives, and that chip must be scanned every time they use the train or enter their work building. One of these members is Silas, who follows the same routine as everyone else, wake up and let the bed make itself, have a bland breakfast, and go to work. Nobody talks as they travel on the train, and they stay silent while they work as well. Everywhere around them, screens remind members to report any deviant behavior, including minor things like a faint smile. The screens also talk about an illness called SOS, or switched-on syndrome, which makes people regain their emotions. Members are reminded to see the doctor if there are any signs of a symptom. Silas works for a company called Atmos as an illustrator, so he spends the whole day drawing on a screen. His art is quite a contrast to the world he lives in, probably because he's inspired by a documentary he listens to while he works. This documentary is about the Great War, a period during which the collective fought to split from the peninsula, a chaotic place where emotions aren't suppressed. There are two moments in the day during which workers talk to each other. First it's during project meetings so they can discuss ideas, and Silas listens to Nia's suggestions with utmost attention. The other moment is lunch, during which everyone makes sure to sit with enough distance among them. Their conversation isn't very lively though, and they stick to factual topics like the co-worker that returned from conception duty. At the end of the day, Silas goes home and watches how officers arrest a sick couple. Later at his apartment, Silas continues his bland routine, a meal prepared by the home AI, solving another generic puzzle, and going to bed. It's the same routine everyone else in the building has. The next day, Silas watches the news and learns that the sick couple will be sent to a defective emotional neuropathy facility or DEN. Members are reminded again to report any signs of SOS, be their own or their co-workers. Later at work, an employee self-deletes by falling off the roof, which happens often in this society. The employees go to the window to look at the body but nobody isn't disturbed except for Nia, who makes very tiny gestures that are noticed by Silas. However, he keeps this information for himself. Afterward, all Amos employees gather for another meeting. While everyone has their attention on the screen, Silas uses the chance to watch Nia, trying to decide if she's sick. In the end, watching a pretty woman for so long starts to change something in him. Later at home, Silas is nervous while he eats his dinner because he can't stop thinking about Nia, and he even has trouble finishing his puzzle. The next day during another work meeting, Silas keeps zoning out and has to be scolded. That night, he dreams that he's standing on a roof, and when he's about to fall, he wakes up. This is the first time he's ever dreamed, so he feels so confused and disoriented that he runs into a wall. The following morning he discovers a bruise on his forehead and goes to the health center, where he sees a woman cry while watching a video about SOS and its four stages of symptoms. A man called Jonas asks Silas what stage he's on, but Silas denies being sick. Then Jonas explains he's on stage two. Afterward Silas sees the doctor and tells him about the nightmare, so he immediately gets tested and the doctor confirms he does have SOS. Silas is scared for a moment because he thinks he'll be sent to a DEN facility, but the doctor assures him they're working on a cure so he'll be fine as long as his symptoms don't get out of hand. Then Silas checks his home computer and notices his profile already says he has stage 1 SOS. Later at work, someone asks Silas why he has a bruise, so Silas lies and says he got it from a Tai Chi class, not wanting to reveal his illness yet. His co-worker doubts him, but to Silas' surprise, Nia cuts in and confirms his story. During lunchtime, a bumblebee lands on their table and Nia traps it in a glass before letting it go. As she explains how strange it is that bees can fly, Silas can't stop looking at her. After work, Silas must pick up shades and medication from the health center. At home he watches a video for members with SOS explaining it's a genetic problem. The gene that is supposed to suppress emotions is malfunctioning and only inhibitor medicine can delay worse symptoms. The next day at work, Silas keeps feeling lots of new things that distract him from his chores. He loses focus and has depressive moments, he also becomes very sensitive to light. When he does manage to work, his drawings are very unconventional. Later during a bathroom break, Silas bumps into Nia and they have a very awkward conversation. Afterward Silas starts following Nia without her noticing until she disappears into her apartment. This experience makes Silas decide to stop taking the medicine. The following day, Silas switches roles with a co-worker on purpose so he can ask Nia to check on his work. Nia does notice is strange, but she helps him anyway. This is noticed by a superior, who makes sure they aren't interacting out of enjoyment. Nia provides very good feedback, but Silas is more concentrated on watching her face. He's becoming so obsessed with her to the point that later in the night, Silas enters the empty office and uses Nia's computer to listen to her recordings. During the next work meeting, 
Silas accidentally spills his drink and when a co-worker helps him, his shades are discovered as well. Now Silas has no choice but to admit he has SOS and even though he swears he isn't contagious, they decide to separate him from the group. Silas is hurt because Nia agrees with the idea. From then on, Silas works in a corner far away from the others. After work, Silas continues to follow Nia. This time she notices and surprises him from behind, threatening to report him if he doesn't stop. When Silas says Nia also has SOS, she tries to deny it, so Silas points out that if she wasn't affected she would have already reported him. Not knowing what to say, Nia leaves. The next day, Silas and Nia pretend nothing happened, and Nia tries to avoid interacting with him as much as possible. However Silas notices she fidgets a lot with her hand, confirming his theory. Later when they're alone in the office, the tension is so thick that Nia rushes to hide in the bathroom. Sia follows her and the two awkwardly stand in the same stall as they try to understand what they feel. After some hesitation, Silas touches her hands and face, not believing how amazing it feels. Finally giving in, Nia leans against him and they share the first hug in their lives. As they enjoy the warm, Nia admits she's been sick for a year. She's very scared and waiting for the cure, so she tells Silas that they can't be together. Silas accepts this but can't stop himself from kissing her before leaving. The following day, Nia can't stop thinking about Silas even though she asked for distance. Silas returns every look and follows her around until they're alone again in the bathroom stall. They are so close that they're almost melting into each other as they experience the warmth of human touch. Unfortunately the moment is interrupted when someone enters the bathroom, so Silas leaves the stall alone to discover it's his manager, who asks Silas if he's thought about self-deleting yet. Silas explains he'll only consider it when he reaches later stages. On their way out, the manager sees that Nia's computer is on and reveals there have been rumors of Silas snooping on Nia, so he must stop if he doesn't want to be reported. The next day after work, Nia waits for Silas in the stall but he doesn't show up. Later they meet in a pathway and discuss the manager's threat. Silas announces he'll ask to be transferred to another job, and Nia leaves without saying anything. When she arrives at her apartment, she has a full breakdown. The following morning, Silas reports his resignation, saying he needs to find a job where his illness won't cause trouble to his co-workers. Soon Silas starts working at a nature sanctuary and Nia has to deal with his replacement. She isn't handling the situation well as she thinks of Silas every time she sees his cup, which she ends up taking back to her place. Her performance at work starts to decline as well. Sometime later, Silas bumps into Jonas and finally shares all that he's feeling lately with Nia. Jonas immediately understands because he also used to have a connection with a woman, but unfortunately their story didn't end well. Then Jonas invites Silas to a support group for people with SOS, and Silas gladly attends a meeting. The people there are scared of the DEN facility, and when Silas asks about it, Bess explains that half the people sent there end up self-deleting while the other half are forced to go through an emotion-suppressing treatment. Bess is a doctor who hides her SOS so she can be there for the patients at the facility. When Silas returns home, he finds Nia waiting for him. She's incredibly nervous and frustrated, so Silas holds her to calm her down. This simple touch grows into more and soon they end up doing the naughty together. Once they're done, they're so amazed by the experience that they discuss the subject of love and vow not to be apart again. From then on they act as strangers during the day, but at night they reunite as lovers. They go on secret dates and get to know each other better, sharing aspects of their lives like dinners and showers. Nia soon regains her mood and her work performance improves. Sometimes when they cross each other on the street during the day, they let their hands brush against each other. One day, a group of officers appear to make a huge announcement. The collective has found a cure for SOS Silas and Nia agree that neither of them wants the cure, and Silas takes Nia to the support group so they can share the news together, they plan to escape to the peninsula. The others try to convince them it's a bad idea, and Bess shares the story of a man who died trying, but the couple doesn't change their minds. Seeing their strong love, Jonas agrees to help, and he makes arrangements for them to escape in three days. The next day when Nia arrives at the office, an alarm goes off and an officer immediately takes her away. Later Nia meets Silas with some terrible news, she's getting summoned for conception duty. This means Nia can't leave because she won't be allowed in trains. However Silas has an idea, she should go to see a doctor and get tested because once they see she has SOS she won't be eligible anymore. The following day at the health center, the doctor tests Nia's blood and is shocked to discover she's pregnant. Naturally occurring pregnancies are one of the worst crimes in this society. Meanwhile Silas is waiting for Nia at their meeting spot, but she doesn't show up and he gets worried. He goes to the health center and is devastated to discover Nia is being taken away to the DEN facility. Once there, she's restrained and treated like a pariah for what she did. Bess soon discovers she's there and contacts the others. Back to Silas, he goes to Jonas for help, and Jonas assures him he and Bess are already working on it so now he must wait. In the morning, Bess uses her doctor privilege to take Nia from her room and takes her to meet with Jonas and the others. Bess explains they'll exchange Nia's body with a woman who recently self-deleted and inserts a new chip in Nia's arm to give her the dead woman's identity. Once she's dressed up and feeling better, Nia thanks Bess and runs away, 
managing to go through the station gates thanks to the new chip. Jonas group also tries to get out and find their way blocked by officers, so they try to take the elevator instead. Unfortunately they find a member who immediately snitches on them and they get arrested. Soon Silas sees the news of Jonas group getting arrested so he runs to the DEN facility to ask about Nia, and the guard informs him that she died. Not being able to deal with a broken heart, Silas goes to the roof of the company building and considers self-deletion. However after lots of hesitation, he steps down. Meanwhile Nia goes to Silas' apartment to wait for him, but he doesn't show up. Eventually she gets tired of waiting and goes looking for him at the sanctuary, but he isn't there either. Now knowing what else to do, she returns to Silas' place. When night falls, Silas finally returns and Nia runs to his arms, but he barely reacts. Nia takes a closer look at him and discovers he's taken the medicine to cure the SOS, so he only has 5 hours left of emotions. Determined to win this, Nia tells him to fight the medicine as she continues to touch him, and they agree to escape anyway. In the end they fall asleep together, hoping her cuddling will keep him feeling. In the morning, Nia wakes up alone in the bed. Silas woke up early following the routine, so he's already all dressed up and ready to go. He explains he remembers the love they shared but he doesn't feel it anymore. However they still leave together because Nia won't give up. As they go to the station, Nia feels a huge distance between them and worries if this will work. Once they board the train, they sit silently as if they were back at the beginning, and Nia's worries get worse. However hope slowly returns when Silas reaches out to touch her hand. 